this video covers how to linearize the system equations for a DC-DC converter. In a previous video, we derived the dynamic states for a DC-DC converter. So assume we already know these equations. The same derivation procedure applies to many different types of DC-DC converter topologies, but we are focusing on the buck converter. Our goal is to model our buck converter plant as a single input single output system. We assume that the equations for the dynamic states of the system have been determined. So now we move to the second step. In this step, we simplify and linearize our system around the equilibrium point in order to model it for feedback control. We start with our two dynamic average equations for the buck converter that we derived previously. Now we want to try to adapt the equations to the SISO system model. In control systems, we use standard variables to represent the different model aspects. The system states are x, the input is u, and the output is y. Let's rewrite our system equation in terms of these standard variables. The inductor current is x1, the capacitor voltage state is x2, then the duty ratio d is the input u. Our objective is to control the output voltage to 5 volts, so our output y is the output capacitor voltage, which is now x2. Here are the equations rewritten with the new variables. Next, we take our system equations and linearize them if needed. However, from these state equations, we can see that these equations are already linear. How do we know? Here are the two requirements for linearity, homogeneity and superposition. You can see directly that if you make the state equations and input zero, the function output for both functions will be zero. So homogeneity is satisfied. If you go through and do the math, you will see that these equations also satisfy superposition. So the system is already linear and there's no need for linearization. Finally, we move to the third step, which is rearranging the linear system equations to determine the transfer function. To find the transfer function from these state equations, we have to take the Laplace transform and rearrange the terms. We know that our input is u and our output is state 2, which is the output voltage. So, we need to find the equations for y of s over u of s. We have our state equations here on the left, and first we need to take the Laplace transform of both of these. At the same time, we need to change our input x2 into y. So let's do that first. First equation would be x, s, x1 equals 1 over l, and instead of x2, we'll replace it with y, because our output and then Vn over L, and then U, the input. Let's do the same thing for the second equation. We get S, again changing X2 into Y, 1 over C, and then X1 minus 1 over RC, Y. In our final equation, what we want to get is Y of S over U of S, our target, so we need to get rid of this X1 term. So let's rearrange the second equation to write x of 1 by itself. If we move our system this part over, we can rearrange our equation. And here we have x1. Let's move the 1 over c multiply on the left side so we get a c here. So here's our equation for x1 and we can take that and plug it back into our first equation. If we do that, we'll get S, C, Y, and S plus one over R, C. That will be equal to one over L, C, Y, plus V, I over L, U. Then we can actually move this down so I got ahead of myself, we're going to move this down over here so we get LC over there. 
Next, we're going to move this side, this y term, to the left side and put all the y's together. If we do this, we're going to get s squared plus 1 over rc s plus 1 over lc here. And then we have vi over clu. Now we can simply rearrange our terms so we get y over u. And our final equation will be here. So we have the vi over lc, all of that over s squared plus 1 over rc times s plus 1 over lc. So here is our transfer function for our system. From the derivation, we now have the transfer function of our buck converter. You can use the same general process to find the transfer function for any DC-DC converter by identifying the dynamic states of your system, linearizing the equations for the if necessary, and deriving the linear transfer function. This transfer function defines our single input, single output system that we use in our feedback control system.